Hi there fellow hobbyists, Mark here, family man and father of three. In this video I thought I would share a project I started before the summer holidays. Um, a while back I acquired a couple of uh, British airborne box sets from Warlord Games and as a mini project um, I thought I would build them for a few games. Unfortunately I never got around to painting uh, the second box so I decided to mix it up a little this time just before summer and paint the second box as Royal Marine Commandos instead. Uh, I managed to assemble most of those before going on holiday and started back up once I returned. These are uh, the box sets that I uh, acquired. Uh, I got two of them. I finished one and I painted them as British Airborne, but the second one, like I said, I tried to do as Commandos. I've broken this video up into sections to show the different stages I took into getting them ready. And as always, I hope you enjoy. Right then, as explained in the beginning of the video, I'm just going to run through the stages I took uh, during the current project I'm running on, which is a small section of Royal Marine Commandos from Warlord Games' Bolt Action series. Um, I did have a few leftovers of the old uh, Parachute Regiment box set and the new Parachute Regiment box set. The reason I kind of held on to the two was to kind of m marry them up and, and mix up the sets, and I'll explain the reason why in a few seconds. Uh, the old school sets uh, generally have the heads and the helmets uh, separately, particularly for certain armies like, in this instance, the British. So you could then marry up the heads and the helmets, and it also came with um, arms, um, but n no weapons. It obviously came with kit um, and backpacks, etc. Now, uh, what you would then do is you then get another sprue uh, with a variety of sort of like weapon choices and a few extra bits and bobs that you could marry these up. Uh, I, I tend to not enjoy these as much, mainly because it, it takes a bit of time to actually marry things up with regard to the arms, the weapons and, and things like that. And I tend to not think it looks that great on the model. I'm not that great at sort of like building the models and it, it looks a bit weird when compared to what they currently do now on a lot of the newer sets, which is, um, as you can see here, this is from a US uh, Marine. Um, it comes with, a, with the arms and, and the weapon, sort of like all presets. So all you have to do is just slot that onto the body. It takes um, it's a lot quicker, um, and I, I think it tends to make the model uh, look a lot nicer. What they also do is, in this instance, they stick their, their heads together, but give you loads of nice little choices, um, so you never run out of, of varying, in this instance, the, the parachute regiment have got the berets and the uh, helmets all in there as well. So I tend to, to enjoy the, the newer sort of like sets, the way they've been doing them more recently. Right then, so once I've assembled the models, glued them with a plastic glue, um, and then based them with some gravel, um, let the PVA dry for um, a while, I then give them a base coat of black. Um, now I can either, I can either use the compressor uh, for that or I can use um, a spray can. Um, I tend to like black because it gives them sort of like a darker feel. Uh, if I'm kind of like painting a more brighter army I'll, I'll tend to use the white. In this instance I gave them a black undercoat and then using the compressor I then sort of like watered down a foundry paints um, drab shade uh, 12A and then use the compressor to give them several sort of like light coats of that just to, so I didn't obscure the detail. I enjoy using the compressor obviously because in this instance I did about 34 of these so I could do them all in one batch once I built them uh, and that if you like is is stage one of, of my sort of like batch army as I try and get through to them. Then I move on to stage two. Stage two again it's it's sort of like not not so much sort of like worrying about making mistakes etc. I then put if you like the, the first stage or the first primary colour uh, on the miniatures after doing the, the base kit. In this instance I have um, got the flesh, uh, their helmets, uh, their kit um, and any sort of light um, spades or, or rifle butts etc. So straightforward realistically with the foundry paints I use the flesh um, 5A shade for the skin tones. I use the boneyard uh, 9A shade for the kit, that being the backpack and the uh, pouches, etc. I then use um, a 
forest green shade 26 for the helmets and the berets in this sense that they're being royal marine commandos obviously they've got the green berets rather than the red being the parachutes um, and then for the uh, rifle butts and spades and, and knife butts etc and, the, and the, the ropes I use the spear shaft shade 138 so I tend not to sort of like worry too much about making mistakes here it's, it's more sort of like getting getting that first layer first layer done so that's like stage two and then I move on to stage three which is a, another quick job which is um, a wash now I do a wash just to bring out that detail that I may have lost um, with regards to uh, things that I've, I've painted. In this instance I gave uh, the flesh tones a wash so it brings out this, um, it brings out the detail again on the flesh um, and the kit gets a wash and I also wash the base again just to give it a bit of texture. I used to purchase um, sort of like particular low washes uh, with regards to paint sets but I tend to find um, in this instance just some normal sort of like calligraphy ink in this instance it was brown that I used um, it's perfectly fine um, just give water it down slightly and, and give those particular areas a wash and bam that's that's stage three so fairly quickly I can I can run through stage one two and three um, with a fair bit of speed before I move on to if you like stage four now stage four is when we start doing um, getting sort of like the, the detail and this is where you've, I've got to start being a bit more careful with my, my brush techniques and it's also where I start adding um, a bit more colors etc um, and doing that so if you like stages one two and three are fairly sort of like rapid so you can see some kind of progress with regards to your army and feel as though you're completing it quite well and then between stages three and four it takes a little bit of time in my instance when I've been doing it so what I do is I then sort of like lightly um, give some brush strokes in this into the kit uh, a dry brush in the uh, rope and then sort of like the same goes for the rifles um, and beret grenades in this instance this fellow and then uh, the skin I just use a, a light brush to, to highlight things like forehead nose chins uh, cheeks and ears etc straightforward again this is why I, t I tend to use a foundry system it means I don't have to think about the paints as I'm painting so for the flesh I use the next one up which is flesh 5b for the kit and uh, backpacks um, I use the next one up again which is boneyard uh, 9b for the berets and the helmets I use uh, next one up forest green 26b for the uh, rifle butts and uh, rope next one up which is spear shaft 13b okay I think that's that um, on this instance as well the parachute regiment they come with uh, different jackets now um, I tend to like the little camouflage effect on the jacket so at this stage I kind of like paint uh, their jackets if, if they come with it with um, so I kind of mix it up with buff leather uh, shade but 7a so the, the primary area I also do the um, weapons so the metal aspects of the weapons again I use the shade for that in this instance chainmail 35a so once I've done those I also then give a dry brush to the base with a uh, base sand shade 10a okay this leaves me down to the last section now which is where um, I'm doing all the details and finishing off the model with a, a variety of uh, different paints most of them again will flow through um, a fairly sequential sort of like idea um, so um, what I'll do then is obviously I'll give another highlight to um, the the skin tone just to bring out detail I will take some stills so you get a, a better idea because it's, it's quite hard to obviously show you on, on the camera um, and then the same goes for the kit I will uh, just do some some highlighting berets in this instance um, with regards to the weapons I'll give them a black wash and then bring up the next highlight I'll, hi I'll dry brush the, the base again with a slight different texture um, and the same goes for the um, the kit as well so for the flesh I move on to 
uh, flesh light 5C. Uh, for the kit, again, I'll use uh, Boneyard light 9C. Um, for the berets or helmets, I use uh, forest green light 26C. Um, for the weapon butts and the rope, I'll use uh, spear shaft light. Now, with the rifle butts, what I tend to not do is a highlight, but try and do a, um, a lined uh, stream on there just to give it the effect that it uh, the wood effect, if that makes sense. Um, and I will also pick out any details of some odd colours. In this instance, I've got I've got this this young chap here with his um, telescope. So I, I used obviously I, I followed through the same technique, but with brass with regards to that one. And then in this instance, this guy's got the camouflage sort of like jacket. So I used uh, the green and the spear shaft here, but I, I missed out one of the shades. I will also um, finally do the um, the kit so obviously their clothes um, because then I can obviously cover up any mistakes I might have made in that instance I will use um, the final drabs if that makes sense so drab 12b and um, highlight slightly with a drab light 12c and then finally for the base uh, a dry brush of base and light 10c and then um, a light on the weapon spear shaft 35c so as you can see in some instances i miss out the b section uh, just to, to speed things up because it, it's not necessary everywhere uh, i'll then uh, flock them and then using um, black black uh, 34a i'll then pick out things like in this instance the the young man's uh, mustache his hair and their their shoes or boots so that uh, that comes through um, and then by doing that in kind of like batch processes in groups of five I can fairly uh, move through through the army fairly quickly and as you can see there that that would basically be the, the stages I would take in building that army uh, as fast as possible but with, with some level of, of good detail hopefully so that they look nice on the battlefield when uh, when playing some games Okay, hopefully that's been of some use to you. Hello again. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and it's been of some use to you. I would love to hear about what you think and maybe offer some suggestions for future projects or videos that I might undertake. Uh, at the end of this, after this, I've included some stills of the models uh, just to see what they look like up close. Thanks again for watching. Hope to see you again soon. Take care.